our welterweight final places two power punchers against each other in Alejandro Brugel and Andrew Diaz. My reason of going to win the Kumite was because I'm just better than the rest of you guys. Now I'm just uh, a little angry because I had a cow that way. I've trained my whole life for this. I've dedicated many, many years to training in martial arts. Fighting out of the blue corner, Andrew Diaz representing Miami, Florida, brings a sport karate background into this pivotal final against the individual out of the red corner, Alejandro Brugal. One of the most powerful guys we've seen today, Ross. This is gonna be a close contest. Yeah, I'm super excited for this matchup. This is one that I've been waiting for throughout this series. You know, we've got the power punching and wrestling from Brugal in the red. We've got the, the flashier techniques, but also the hard, you know, front leg, the side kicks, the round kicks, the hook kicks from Diaz. Let's see how it plays out. Andrew Diaz got past Michael Sugarbomb Claycom in the semifinals, and Brugal beat the Latvian predator Artur Skarnafels in his semifinal matchup. Great performances by both. Absolutely. I like the front hand staying nice and long for Brugal. You know, it's, it's a good distraction, kind of slow down the pressure. Helps him be a little more elusive there. Both fighters taking their time. I think Brugal understands the car crash that could occur in the pocket with the general. power of Diaz. He doesn't want to take any unnecessary strikes. Yeah, and that's something that, that can really shut down the wrestling is that front lead leg side kick. Is, oh, and then an axe kick goes right behind it. Beautiful Way to close right the here. guard. Some ground and pound onto the side. Up kick's not there. Big shot to the face, Ross. Oh. Yeah, good ground and pound there, but again, does that oh, does that overdo and overshadow that awesome axe kick from Diaz? You got to be careful though. You throw those high flashy kicks, and we've seen it a couple times already in the Kumite. You, you throw that flashy kick, you get caught up there, you get taken down and punished for it. Not surprised that Andrew Diaz opts for the flashy strikes. Almost uh, an illegal strike right there. Yeah. Could have been bad, Ross. Great job by the ref stepping in and getting that stop before something was really dangerous. But we get up and we get back to work. Andrew Diaz, inspired by Bruce Lee, John claude Van Damme, the action stars of the old days. And you can see that in his style. Big time, yeah. He's got the bounce. He's got the head movement. He's throwing the punches and the kicks. But Brugal, I mean, as powerful as they could possibly come. Yeah, you can even just see it in his body frame. His shoulders are almost twice the size. You know, the width. He's just a wide human being. You know, but I'd love to see him start to mix it up a little bit more. He's a little tentative, almost waiting too long to engage the grappling. Final 10 seconds here between Diaz and Brugal. Round one comes to a close. Gotta think the most significant strike was that excellent axe kick by Diaz. Absolutely, like even though you know Brugal ended up on top of that exchange, we gotta think about damage. And that, that initial axe kick was just so impressive. He, he landed that, he started with the side kick, went up to the axe kick, and really did damage throughout that round. We take it to the jury to get their thoughts on round number one between Andrew Diaz and Alejandro Bruca. Well, you guys just said it the same thing, you know. He did a beautiful axe kick, but he got taken down. And I gotta say, Brugal's ground and power is actually pretty solid. That was a really nice. So who is it going to in that particular case? I don't know. It's a hard one. I think I think the first round was good for warming up. Yeah. Now let's see the second round going in full throttle. Yeah, yeah. but it's only two minutes. Yeah, because we know they both have power, so yep. if they just start to throw, yeah, it will be dangerous for both of them. Yep. Well, let's... Our welterweight final comes into the second okay. round. Veteran referee Sam Amiri, making sure both guys are good. Two gentlemen, you ready? You Ross, ready? Let's go. If you're Diaz, what would be the adjustments you'd want him to make? I mean, I just stay super long with the sidekick. I would stay to the body and the leg. I wouldn't throw up high and uh, and risk the takedown. You know, and maybe he's listening. <laughs> Athleticism by Brugal to bring Diaz to the pit side. No ground and pound. Really good dexterity by Diaz in these maybe disadvantageous positions. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Brugal and I love the wrestling. He's powerful, he's explosive, he's doing good damage in ground and pound, but he's being reactive instead of proactive. You know, you can't 
take one to give one in the wrestling exchanges. I think if he sets it up with his hands and ducks under and, and can attack there, we'd see better scoring. But again, I'm not a judge. I'm just a fan, and I like seeing this stuff, and I want to see how it plays out. Sam Amidi encouraging some action here. The puzzle of Andrew Diaz is giving Alejandro Brugal just a bit of pause. He doesn't seem to know how to enter or how to start these combinations. <laughs> Your and look at that, there we go, a big stop, entrance stop, stop, to the grappling, that's what I like to see. Five, five for a second. calls time, bit of a clash of heads potentially. Be careful the way that you're coming in with that head, you clear? You good? You sure? Yeah? All right, watch your head for me, please. T time keeper, come back in, let's go. It's always exciting to see these young amateur fighters really making good progressions, and not just from round to round, but from exchange to exchange. That's something that you don't see even at the higher levels of pro fighters. You get these guys that are really good at one or two things, and that's it. These guys are making adjustments on the fly, and that's what the karate background does for you in full contact sports. Work to take down, work to take down. Those mid-game adjustments, some would say, take you from great to excellent. Beautiful work right here by Andrew Diaz. Let's go, let's go, let's go, turn the face, turn the face. Bit of a stalemate. Seems like both guys just don't really know what to do. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's karate combat, not karate wrestling. I just want, I gotta see a little bit more from Brugal. Nice. Bit of a, that was a good right hand, hand Brugal, yep. Diaz momentarily stumbling on the pit side, but regains the center here. Stance switching from both. Beautiful leg kick right there by Brugal. Final 10 seconds, Ross. Somebody needs to make a stamp. Yeah, it's, it's happening right now. I think we're starting to see that, that physical presence of Brugal is really weighing on Diaz. There could be a third round. Straight off of me, please. Brugal and Diaz find themselves at the conclusion of round number two. Again, a very technical puzzle that both guys are struggling to solve. Ross Levine, your thoughts through two rounds. Super competitive. I see we're starting to see the physicality. I got it 1-1. One, one. You heard the referee say it. Hey, guys, there might be a third round. I agree with the ref. That's why he's the best in the biz. What do you think? Let's take it to the jury and see what they think. One more round. Yeah. One more <laughs> round. Exactly. One, one more round. round. Uno one more round. Encore le fois. I don't know what it means. We'll be going to the third round. Gambling. There we go. Yes, let the it go. judges yeah. have notified that our welterweight final will have a third and final round between Andrew Diaz and Alejandro Brugal let's Ross. Go, please, like we talked about, the size let's go, let's of go. Brugal is starting to wear on the smaller guy in Andrew Diaz. We'll see how he responds and if he can capture the credit combat contract. Yeah, I think the Turn dangerous the thing right ready, now is when ready. you start to be susceptible to the wrestling, you start to become a shell of yourself and you don't start fighting. You know, I think the key for Diaz is, listen, if you're going to get taken down, you got to make him pay for it. Get active and land the good shots on the way to getting taken down. It's only three seconds. Get back up and do it again. Oh, front kick right there yeah. from Brugal. Diaz, slow start to round number three, but inching forward, slowly cornering the larger man. I mean, we're talking about a, a third round to decide a, a karate combat contract. Gotta have some more activity here. A little clash of heads again for the second time there. Sam Amidi brings Diaz back up. Diaz working out the, the jaw. Amidi giving a moment again. That's why he's one of the best that we've got. Yeah, and I think that's the difference, right? It's that when you enter straight with the wrestling, sometimes you lead with the head, but leading with the strikes is going to be the difference for the fighter here. Diaz taking a moment. Alejandro Brugal, single mom growing up. Face those challenges. Here he is, representing his family well. Hell of a fight. And big welterweights, too. I mean, these guys are, are big compared to the pro fighters in the welterweight division, too. I'm, I'm excited to see one of these guys get a contract and... Yeah, potential of that first fight, right? If you're Andrew Diaz, you've dealt yeah. with some head clashing, some some bad spots here. How do you mentally restructure? You know what? The, there's there's only one focus. You can't focus on what happened and, oh, I, I got this and this happened to me. Hey, you only got about a minute left to make this happen. You got to go. It's do or die for Andrew Diaz in round number three of our welterweight final. Alejandro Brugal just gradually pulling away with this one. A single contract is up for grabs between these two fighters. Ross, once again, trying to figure out the entries. Yeah, yeah, this is not the time to be figuring anything out. You gotta get active and that's what it is. It's all about activity. Big slam from Ortega. Brugal, excuse me. 
Let's go, let's go. Up, 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 up. Turn around. Let's Sam go. Turn Amidi. the face. Turn the face. We've got time. Trying let's to go. get the action going between these two athletes. Feels like the grappling will somewhat be the deciding factor here in this fight. Yeah, if we don't see a little bit more activity here from Diaz, I think that is going to be the, the, the big difference maker. Andrew Diaz had a lot of power punches in his first appearance. Really just keep, keeping the foot off the gas here. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why. Oh! Big shot, we got a hook kick. Stop, stop, you're on your knees. Up, up, Andrew up, up, Diaz up, up, once go, again up, up, with a massively up, up, significant up, up, moment. Can he right capitalize? Right Does this give him a little bit of life? Brugal seems like he's trying to blink some cobwebs out. Brings the smaller man to the pit side. Final 10 seconds in our welterweight tournament. Stop. Oh, let's go. Up, 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 up. Couple more seconds left. Does Andrew Diaz have one more trick in the bag? Ooh. Sam Amidi gets in between our two athletes just as the action was heating up three rounds in the can. Ross Levine, your thoughts on this welterweight final? Gosh, what a fight. I mean, the, the trickiness of that front leg with Andrew Diaz. You know, this was just a clash of styles. It, you put Andrew against anybody else who's going to sit and try and exchange, and they're going to be in trouble. He's tricky. I've got Brugal, though. He just came forward. He smashed that down, and he was able to establish the wrestling from round one all the way to round three. The grappling of Brugal, similarly my deciding factor, I would favor him. But again, let's take it to the jury and see what they thought in this welterweight final. Game plan on that. Yeah, yeah. But he, I think, put the kicks was better. Yeah. Some head kicks, too. Yeah. A couple clashes to the head that we had in there um, affected me a little bit. One of them really got me right on the jaw. One of them was up here. One got me clear on the jaw. The clash of uh, heads definitely, uh, I wouldn't say rocked me a little, but they definitely hurt. First one, it's a little shocking. The second one, I kind of expected it just because I felt like he was uh, lowering his levels when I went for a takedown, which is probably what you should do to try to defend the takedown. That wraps up our welterweight final. Now we go to our jury for their takes on that fight. Boss, you first. I think it was a lot of respect between the both of you. You didn't really pull the trigger. So it, uh, you know, not too many strikes has been thrown, but you know, there was some at the very end. You started working uh, really well. Um, you liked the ground and pound, and we saw that was the game plan from that moment on. Take him down and go for ground and pound. So it's a, it's a tough fight to judge. This game plan was very clearly to win on takedowns. I don't think he hit me too much with the ground and pound, but he did get a lot of the takedown points. My ground and pound was definitely uh, one of the keys part of uh, this fight. Adam? Yeah, I, I think you guys both have a lot of potential. Uh, but, well, that's why you're amateurs, because you don't have that many fights yet. Um, I think it was good, same there, you know, like you need to pull the trigger. You have to show us why you want to be the champion. But uh, in general, for the whole tournament, great job, guys. He was more of a karate guy he had that nice timing and distance um, his kicks were a lot better and then his counter his right hand um, he was definitely looking for that um, I don't think he hit me with that too much I didn't capitalize on many moments that I could have taken a lot of opportunities missed and our star welterweight what is your take on these welterweights in here big guys strong powerful guys um, and uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I did a welterweight fight. I, I am a lightweight, but uh, seeing these guys, I will probably never move up to welterweight again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can. I agree with Boss and Adam. But I, I know myself that sometimes you get a little bit, you know, shy for pulling the trigger. Yep. Maybe you got caught with something. You know, you start to think too much. So I know these things can happen. But uh, great fight from both of you. And now we go to the judges' scorecards. It was pretty even, and they needed uh, to see more to uh, make a decision. I knew we were both some heavy hitters, and whether the fight was close or not, they definitely wanted to see a third fight, and I don't blame them. I received the scorecards, and the contract goes to... Alejandro Bruga. Yeah. Congratulations, Alejandro Bruga with the welterweight karate combat contract. It felt a little surreal, honestly. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to process it. The American top team prospect and training partner of Maximo Nunez and Kai Calloway joins his fellow training partners inside the Karate Combat roster. Great performance. We take it to Alex Wenling for the post-fight interview.
Congratulations, my friend. After that first round, did you feel like you needed to pick up the pace in any way, or was there something about his game that you didn't want to risk too much? Um, I definitely felt like I needed to pick it up, but I was picking and choosing my shots, um, so I wouldn't get caught with his counters. Um, yeah. And when we look at the welterweight division, we have some big names. We got Raymond Daniels in there, Shaheen Adamov, and now uh, Samuel Erickson is not identifying as a welterweight. He just claims lightweight completely. So when you look at the names in the welterweight division, what are your thoughts? They're beatable. They all have holes. And with enough preparation in the right camp, I can take them. Well, congratulations on now receiving your karate combat contract. We can't wait to see what's next. Alejandro Brugal, welcome to The Professionals. Thanks for watching, I'm Leila, and if you liked what you just saw, make sure you subscribe.